back with another YouTube video and today I have a basic set plus some hand painted Frenchies with a croc print design. So we got a lot going on here and I also wanted to talk about dealing with an unsatisfied client. So if you are interested in hearing about this topic, stick around, but getting right into the nail tutorial, I am currently removing the shine off of my client's natural nail plate. I am using a fine grit sanding band and I'm just going over the entire nail plate to make sure that we get any dead skin that's laying on the plate right off. So I did season my sanding band before using it and by season I mean I turned it on and I rubbed it against the hand file really really quickly, nothing too crazy, to remove the edges of the sanding band because I am going to get real close to the cuticle area using the sanding band. I am not going to be going in with a cuticle bit today so I did want to just let you guys know that. And once I'm finished with this, we will be applying some extra long nail tips to her nails. did already apply the nail tips and I did cut them down. She did want to keep them a little long so I didn't cut them too too much. I will be going over the nail tip to start to blend the nail tip in with the natural nail. Now my file is not going too too quickly at all but I do want to make sure that the nail tip is blended from both side walls to make sure that later on we have a very smooth application and I don't have to worry about any other nail tips sticking out on the side. So these are square non c curve nail tips now as you guys can see they're already a nice shape so i really did not want to shape them too much i am going to just leave them how they are and i am currently cleaning off her nail plates using this alcohol pad now i did buy a huge box of alcohol pads to be able to do this and i was fanning it out to make sure that everything was nice and dry and now i'll be applying one layer of my young nails protein bond and one layer of my no lift primer Normally I like to do my video super close up, but somebody did request that I leave the monomer and the acrylic powder in the video at least for a couple seconds so people can see how much of the acrylic powder I'm picking up, how long I'm in the monomer, how long I'm in the powder. So I'm hoping that this kind of helps you guys a little more. And the first bead that I picked up was a larger size bead, so I am going to dry it out before placing it on the nail. I do not want this to be too runny, and I did place it right on top of where I placed the nail tip. For me, it is kind of a habit to be consistently going back into my dappin dish, but sometimes I only put the tip of the brush inside of the monomer. It's still going to soak up a decent amount. I do want to make sure that my brush is not dry. So moving on right here, I am currently getting this nail really, really smooth. And as you guys can see right here, I did take the acrylic powder from the free edge and I had put it on the top of where I placed my first bead. And I am starting to even that out, making sure that all of that acrylic is nice and snug to the nail. And so far, y'all, this look real good my next bead i am picking up a smaller bead i do want to start to build the apex so just like before i am going to make sure that this bead fully cured and that i dried it out before placing it after placing it i will be using the tip of my brush to make sure that all of that acrylic powder is from sidewall to sidewall and then starting from the bottom of the bead is where i'll start to blend this down which i'm about to do right here even after blending this down i do make sure that i consistently just go over the nail clean up the sidewalls and clean this up as I go. Me personally, I like to get a perfect application so that later on I don't have to file too much, but other people just throw the acrylic on there and file to perfection, which of course is whatever you wanna do and what you're most comfortable with. For the last bead, which is gonna be the cuticle bead, this is the smallest bead that I used and I did place it a little bit behind the cuticle area and I did just allow it to fall onto the open space. I was starting to pat it a little more to make sure that it's set enough because I did feel like the bead was a little runny. But once I finished wiping everything down, I did go back to the cuticle area and make sure that everything was nice and clean and that there was no product touching her skin.
Now, since that finger is finished, I definitely am ready to talk about a dissatisfied client. Now, me personally, I haven't had too, too many experiences where I had a client that was dissatisfied. And I'm going based off of them actually telling me. Because we all know sometimes people will not like something, but really won't want to speak up. The first thing I would do if a client is dissatisfied is, of course, ask them what it is that they don't like or what could possibly be fixed so that they'll be satisfied. So that's the first thing I ask. I don't get upset because it's more like a learning experience to me because whatever happened with her nails or why she was dissatisfied, we need to make sure that that doesn't happen with other clients in the future. So you don't really want to look at it as something negative. I know sometimes people could come off kind of aggressively, but I really don't feel like they mean any harm. But of course, you can politely let them know, like, you know, just explain to me what it is that you don't like. And let's see if there's something that we can fix so that when you leave, you didn't waste money and that you're satisfied. What they don't like could honestly be a misunderstanding or maybe they feel like they should have spoke up sooner and told you something. You really do never know what it is. So I definitely would recommend going into the situation at a very calm state. There's definitely no reason to get upset. But like I said earlier, the main focus at the moment should be addressing what it is exactly that they do not like about the set. Now, in the scenario that there's really nothing you could do to fix them, or if it's just something that they probably really should have stated earlier, if you want to, you could give them like a small discount off of the set, you know, just for them not being satisfied and for them speaking up about it. Just in my opinion, this is what I would do. Or you can offer them some type of discount or anything like that on the next set. When I first started doing nails, I used to give people discounts if like their nails was lifting within that first week. I would be like, you know, I apologize about that. Of course, I did not want that to happen or that I know that was going to happen. But if you are interested in booking with me again in the future, I can give you a 15% off, 20% off, whatever you want to do, whatever you feel is comfortable. But that is something that I used to do and I feel like clients do appreciate it. And you don't really have to worry about them trying to get over it. Because they probably didn't think you was going to do that anyway. Now, if they keep doing it, trying to get discounts now, you got to stop that. But I feel like nine times out of ten, you know, they're going to be genuine about not liking their nails. Like, it's already a lot for people to say what they don't like, at least for some people. So they definitely would appreciate a small discount. So since we're here, I might as well tell you a couple times, clients told me they did not like their nails. Now, the first time I could think about is maybe about two years ago, I had a client come and she wanted some extra long black nails. I remember these nails. They was a freestyle and they came out really pretty. And now she told me that normally she gets really simple stuff, not too many stones, you know, maybe just a basic set or a plain French tip. So I'm like, okay, so we going all out for your birthday. So I did my thing. They were really pretty and she told me she liked them. And maybe some hours later, she texted me a small paragraph. I don't remember what exactly it said, but I remember her telling me that she didn't like the nails and she felt like they was too much for her. And this was a scenario where I really wasn't too sure what to do. So I was like, okay, well, it's not that you don't like the nails. Is it too much blink? Like, is that the problem here? So I did offer for her to come back and, you know, I could remove some of the stones if you feel like the stones would be an issue. Or if you wanted to shorten your nails, we could do that because I had did them earlier that day. Now, the next morning gets here. I'm not sure if she went out for her birthday or if she went out the night before. What happened? But the next day, she texted me apologizing, saying that she loved her nails and she was sorry. For, I guess texting me again. She was pretty much saying that it's just different for her, but they're not ugly and that she wasn't trying to be offensive. See, in that scenario, I was like, OK, like, I understand where you're coming from. It was something new for you. And I wasn't upset when she told me she wasn't feeling them. I was just like, dang, I thought you told me that this year big birthday. Like, I thought we was going crazy. But honestly, imagine if I would have got super upset and was like, well, that's what you wanted. So that's what you got. Like, I could have said something crazy. But why even cause conflict when she's possibly going to come back in the future? I don't really remember if she did come back or not after. But possibly you didn't lose out on a client just yet. She's just letting you know what she didn't like. So don't lose a potential client pretty much getting in your feelings. Sometimes people just need to express what they have to say in a polite way and I do feel like that's what she did there like it wasn't rude she wasn't being aggressive she was just simply letting me know like hey this is a little bit much for me I actually recently had a client that's been coming to me for a minute and when she booked her appointment I had booked it for her now I should have stated what I booked for her like I booked her for a discounted like 
Valentine's Day set. Like I was just doing Valentine's Day freestyles. And after I finished her nails, she had told me that she wasn't, it's not that she didn't like them, but she wasn't like in love with them, I guess she could say. So I had asked her, I was like, well, what's wrong with them? Like, what can I do? Like, what can I change about them? And she was like, there's nothing for you to change, but she thought she was getting more. And that's when I remembered that we never really discussed what set she was getting. At least I don't recall. Like, I just remember her saying that she was getting a full set and, you know, her toes done. So I was like, you know, it's Valentine's Day. I'm just going to book her for the special. So that's something I should have discussed prior. Of course, I did apologize. And she's been coming to me for a minute. So I was like, girl, I'm not trying to lose you as a client. What can we do here? Because I'm puzzled. But after I did get quiet. Now, the only reason I got quiet was because I was just sitting there thinking, okay, I had plenty of people book this special, and even though she didn't book it on the website, I never necessarily specified how much or how little you were getting in the freestyle. It was just labeled a freestyle. So I was like, okay, well, now I know in the future that I need to make sure that people know what it is exactly that they're getting, so there's no confusion. But she was like, you know, I'm not trying to make you feel in a way, you know, like, because I got quiet, but I was just sitting there thinking like, dang, how can I prevent this next time so I don't have this issue again? Well, luckily for me, I haven't had too many encounters where somebody told me they did not like their nails and it was aggressive. I believe there was one time and I think that too was just like a misunderstanding, but she did like apologize and stuff. There's also been times where someone told me they didn't like their nails and I got so sad. Like, I'm not going to say I act like there wasn't times like that or like I was always this way. I've been doing nails for four years and as the years has passed, I just learned how to deal with situations in the best way possible. So I feel like that contributes to why I act the way I do now. But there definitely used to be times somebody used to be talking about my nails when I was in high school or something. I'd be like, dang, like, you ain't tell me you didn't like them. But overall, I do prefer for people to tell me instead of me having to hear it from somebody else. Like, that's just kind of ridiculous to me. But like I said, everybody does things differently. And some people are, you know, scared to speak up. Like, they won't tell you they didn't like them, but they're going to go leave and tell about 40 people that they hated the nails. And I just don't get it. But moving on, you guys can let me know down below if there was ever a time where a client told you that they didn't like their nails. Feel free to put a little story time in the comments because I'll be reading the comments. Yeah, I try to get to as many comments as possible. So I definitely wanted to share a couple of my experiences with you guys. So feel free to comment down below.
Moving on, I did finally finish the application and now I am starting to seal the cuticle area using this drill bit. Now this recently became one of my favorite drill bits. I use this all the time. Now I used to use the safety bit, the five in one bit, but I do like this one way, way better. This bit is a medium grit bit and I will be linking it down below. I am currently removing some of the acrylic powder that's closest to the cuticle area. I did want to debulk the apex just a little bit. I did feel like it was a little too high and I am going to go over the free edge as well because we do want that to be about credit card thin. Sealing the cuticles are extremely, extremely important. We want to prevent any moisture from getting underneath the nail that will cause lifting. And I've told you guys plenty of times that I'm able to get my client's nails to last about four weeks. The body of the nail i will be filing down and going across the nail evenly this way later i don't have to file too too much with my hand file so like here as you guys can see i go over the entire nail in small pieces but i'm making sure that i'm getting the whole thing now here i'm starting to go in using my hand file and like i said i will also be filing the surface of these nails but the first thing I do is file those side walls. So I'm going to make sure that those are nice and straight. And then afterwards, as you guys can see here, I'll be going over the entire nail using my hand file. Now, I really don't go in the cuticle area with the hand file because I don't want to possibly cut my client. And we did already seal the cuticle area using the bit. When I was working, I was also making sure that all of the nails were still the same length. Sometimes I may have a habit of over filing one. So that's why I like to make sure I go ahead and size them up and make sure that they are about the same length.
for buffing the nails, I did go get my drill bit again and I started to file underneath the nails. Even though these were non C curve tips, I do still kind of like to give it that C curve look. So that's why on a high speed, I was just going underneath the nail and I was also starting to file the free edge just a little more. The last thing that I'll be doing before applying my designs is adding this cuticle oil and buffing these nails. I like to put the oil on there to get them really smooth. And when I'm finished with doing this, my client is going to go wash her hands using a dust brush, the same dust brush that I was using earlier so that we can get all that dust off and so that we can remove the cuticle oil that was on the base. For the French tip nails today, I was going for a deep French tip. So after I painted these two lines, I am going to create a straight line where I would like the bottom of the smile line to be. And it doesn't have to be too perfect. As you guys can see, I really just left the line looking like whatever. And starting from the top of the first two lines we created, I'm going to start to bring this in. I definitely got much better at French tip. Now, I've been practicing these hand-painted French tips. It definitely took me a minute to get it really straight, but I definitely think good brushes play a role. So I will be linking the brushes I use today down below. They are the brushes that I always use. I love these brushes from Amazon. And they do come with a long one, a medium one, and a short one. Now, I'm not the best. I'm not saying my lines are always super perfect. And that's why right here, you guys see that I'm constantly going back to the smile line to make sure that it is as straight as possible. Once I like the result of the smile line, I am going to go in with the brush from the bottle and start to paint this. And I am going to be applying two coats of gel polish to all of the French tips before top coating. Now, originally, my client did show me some brown croc Frenchies, and I was like, girl, Valentine's Day is coming up. How about we do different shades of pink? So all of the colors I'm using today are from D&D. &D. Most of my gel polish is from D&D &D because they're at the local nail supply store.
Now, I do try to apply a thin layer of gel polish, but once I'm finished with actually going in with the larger brush, I do like to go back in with the smaller one and make sure that I'm getting those side walls. Also, this allows for there not be too much gel polish trying to drip off on the side when she goes to cure her nails. So this is how the Frenchies are currently looking. I love the colors. Now I did decide to go in with the same pink that was on the ring finger on the thumb because I did not have another shade of pink. But I am going to top coat these nails real quick and allow them to cure for 60 seconds in my lamp before I start my crock print design. Now the crock print is a very, very simple design. I am going in with my daughter tool and I'm creating thick lines, I guess I could call them, going down the nail. And I'm using the same gel polish that we use for that color Frenchie. After I'm finished doing this, I am going to get some clear acrylic powder and start to pour it on top of the wet gel polish.
I need to do a full set of this white croc French tip because this looks really good. But anyway, y'all, I am going to go over the nail multiple times using the acrylic powder to really make sure that it soaks up. I feel like the first time you pull the acrylic powder on, it kind of soaks up in the gel. And then the second one, I feel like it gets a little thicker. Or I'll even pour the acrylic powder for a long time, but you do want to allow it to soak up. And then pour some more on top of it so that it doesn't soak into the gel polish and then still looks glossy. As you guys can see on the pinky, the acrylic powder being poured onto the gel polish leaves a matte look on top of where we painted. last thing that i'll be doing today is adding some charms to these nails now i think i got these charms from amazon i think these were like some sailor moon hearts if i'm not mistaken i am gonna go and look on amazon just to be sure so that i can link this down below Now at first, I'm only going to flash cure the gem and I do this because I need to make sure that I'm continuously moving and once I know that all the gems are secured, then I'll go ahead and cure it one more time for 60 seconds to make sure that the gel is fully cured. Now I only placed a small drop of the gel, you don't want to place too much and then it starts to seep on like the outsides of the gem because it just looks, it looks gross, you definitely don't want that. So these nails are top coated already so the last thing I gotta do is apply the cuticle oil once I'm finished applying these gems. Like I said I won't be top coating these nails again because you want to keep that matte design. And I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed filming these nails and I do appreciate my client for sitting with me today. So if you did enjoy this video feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And like I said earlier let me know down below if you ever had a client that did not like their nails.